Hello, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador LeBeau, and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. Today, I'd like to welcome Corrine Ostrike. Welcome, Corrine. Thank you. I've been anxious to have you on. You have so many talents, and I want to talk about all of them today. Well, we'll get as many as we can in. But tell me about your tribal affiliation. Uh, yeah, I'm Oglala Lakota and Blackfoot. And, uh, but I grew up here in the Sunnyvale Bay area of California. Oh, okay, so local girl. Local girl, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so now do you dance or? I jingle dress dance, yeah. Jingle dress dance. I think yeah. we have a photo yeah. of you jingle dress dancing, or at least in your regalia in there. That's beautiful. Thank and you have a you. microphone in front of you. Are you yeah, also MC? <laughs> no, this was for um, a heritage day at um, the school that I work at. And oh, so okay. um, I was able to demonstrate the jingle dress and oh, uh, okay. set up the table and, and talked a little bit about um, my heritage and shared that with my school. And the students se really seemed to love it. Oh, how nice. And yeah. I think the next photo is with your daughter, is it? Yeah, that's my daughter, how Emma. Cute. How old is she? She's four. And oh. uh, that's her, her little jingle dress we had made for her because her name's Fire in the Belly. So oh, that's a little fire on, right on her tummy right there. Oh, so yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. So she likes dancing with me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. So you go to all the local powwows and I do, but not to dance. I haven't danced in some years uh, because I've been pregnant, and when I'm pregnant, I don't dance in the circle. So, mm -hmm. um, but I go there primarily for working for powwows.com. Right, and you know, we met. At a demonstration, I guess it is, or a walk, the right. Women's March, yeah, about a year right. ago. I know. I saw your. Uh, you were holding the. Um the standing rock, I stand with standing rock oh, sign, and right. I said, "Who's that?" And I ran <laughs> up there, and it was you. And I, I had seen your show before, and so I recognized who you were, and I was so starstruck. <laughs> I was really excited to meet you in person. Yeah, that was such a pleasure. And then you were telling me that you mm -hmm. take photos for powwows.com, and I always follow powwows.com to see what's <laughs> going on where, and you right. know. So tell me about doing that, you know, working with uh, powwows.com. Do you oh, write articles and take yeah. pictures? Yeah, I love it. Um, so I've done photography for about five years, just professionally. Mm -hmm. Before that, I always enjoyed it just as a, as a hobby. But um, I started using that, that, um, that hobby in the powwow circle. And so I started photographing and, um, and then eventually Submitted to powwows.com this application and my and my works, and then um, started writing articles, uh, interviews with MCs, interviews with mm -hmm. dancers, and then also submitting my photography and making sure that they got to the dancers as well, because that was my gift to them, making oh, sure that nice. they had those photos for their families and passing them on. And they're beautiful photos. Thank I've you. seen a lot of them on Thank Facebook you. and then powwows.com. Let's take a look at a few of them. Sure, sure. See what you've taken. I know some of the people in the photos. <laughs> oh, that well, that's one, that's me. That's me. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. in San Francisco for the the, um, Water the Native Snow. Walk. Oh, yeah. the Native Walk. Yeah. So we were we were marching. I think that was back in a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. um, just a, dem a demonstration of asking them to honor treaties and and standing with Standing Rock publicly in that in that city, so that's me. <laughs> that's a cool photo, I like that. Thank yeah, you. I thought it was probably something with Standing Rock. Yeah, this is Gathering of Nations, uh, which I got to co-host the live feed for with Paul Gowder, who is the owner of powwows.com. Oh, okay, so how we was were, that experience It was the gathering? It was a lot of fun. Gathering it was extremely different from any of the other powwows I've gone to, mm -hmm. um, beca just because of the sheer size. Um, I told Paul it felt almost like the Super Bowl of powwows because <laughs> there was so much there and so much going on. Um, but it was really neat to be up there on the stage and to see, you know, all the dancers. And I knew it was in Tingley Coliseum this year instead of the Pit oh, well, um, in yeah, Albuquerque. So it used to be at the Pit, but right, then that's it was where at I've been. Tingley, yeah, which is at the fairgrounds, and um, it was uh, there was a lot more room for the dancers, and it was fun. Oh, fun. good, because it was always so crowded there and hot, yeah. and you could barely walk, had to walk sideways to right. get through. <laughs> yes, I've heard that. And then this year, we got through everything pretty much on time, just because no one was cramped. So oh, we got everybody out there for grand entry, and, and that is beautiful, nobody was it? elbowing each other, <laughs> and they were, they were able to 
to dance in their own space. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, wow, that my good. feet, that's great. I think we have a few more photos there. Let's see, what do we have? Okay, okay. yeah, this is a Phillips boy. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, Tommy Phil Tom Phillips' son. This was at the Stanford Pow Wow this year. Oh, okay. So that was one of my favorites that that's I took. A nice oh, shot. Yeah, thank you. This is also Stanford. This is Stanford too. Yeah, yeah. that was this year. It was pretty dusty out there, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> and this was a young boy who is dancing at Gathering. Before, oh, gathering. before Grand Entry, they had a couple um, exhibitions, so. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. That's and that my, was That's my niece. The, oh, really? <laughs> uh-huh. And that's Sacred at, Dawn. Nice. Uh-huh. Yeah, and this was at the Bates Pow Wow this year oh, in San okay. Francisco. She's such a little doll. <laughs> I love, she was such a yeah. cute dancer. I loved watching her. Yeah. And there's Marcos Madrill. There's Marcos. I said, I'm going to put your picture up. And he yeah. goes, make sure it's my good side. I said, there's a feather covering your face. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's a good shot of him. Thank you. That's also Stanford. And that's me. Oh, that's big. Where was that taken? That's uh, Coyote Creek in Fremont. Yeah, um, yeah we beautiful. went out there um, among the Thule plants. And just, this was a photo by a friend of mine, Ryan Wilson. So uh -huh. he took that that's for gorgeous. me. Gorgeous. Thank you. Now, your, your photography business, that's something that you've been doing for some time now. Tell yeah. me about that. Um, so I do portraits of families. Um, I do engagement pictures. And I started doing that five years ago professionally. And I've done some weddings. And it's a lot of fun. It doesn't ever really feel like work. It feels like I'm, uh, it's just what I love doing. So uh -huh. I, as soon as I get home, I edit the, the pictures right away because I can almost, like as I'm driving, I get excited to just get home and start working on them. Uh -huh. And then I always like to give my clients their photos within either 24 hours or 48 hours because I know they're oh, nice. as excited as I am to get their pictures. Now, do you take a lot of them, like I saw some of them were out in the open. Right. And those are nice nature yeah. shots. All, I primarily do all outdoor natural light photos. Oh, good, yeah. good. <laughs> but you also do weddings and mm -hmm. other events? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks. It's nice to know that we have a native business doing, yeah. uh, taking pictures. Nice. And I love your powwow pictures. Those are gorgeous. Thank you. Just beautiful. Thank you. Now, I am interested in knowing about your singing and dancing. You are so talented. Hi. So tell me, how long have you been singing and dancing? Um, 15 years. Yeah. I've been doing that for 15 years. I did uh, a lot of musical theater and acting in high school and a choir. Um, and then when I, I went to Sonoma State University and I was a uh, musical theater major with uh, pursuing a minor in opera. So that was wow. a lot of fun. Um, I did a little night music. I was Ann Eggerman in that. I've also been in um, King and I, where I played Tub Tim, um, and uh, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying is another one. I was Hetty LaRue in that, which is, she's kind of fun to play because it's very opposite of who I am. <laughs> so <laughs> really, as an actress, it had me kind of branch out. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. And you're doing a musical now. I am, yeah. Tell us about that one. It's been a while since I've been in a musical, so I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited to get my feet back in the water. It's uh, with the Sunnyvale Community Players, and uh, the show's Fiddler on the Roof, and I've been cast as ensemble, so I'm very excited to get back into to theater, and local community theater is always so much fun, so much fun to do. How long is it from the time you start rehearsing and the actual show go, you know. Right, so we start rehearsal in July, and then uh, we open in September, and then we'll run through the middle of October. Oh, so it's for a while, huh? Yeah, and we do several shows Is a it week. like weekend shows? No, or? we do several shows a week, uh, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then two on Sunday, so. It'll be fun. That's exciting. Well, I'm sure that's a lot to um, memorize and... Uh... Yeah, especially, um, it'll be different this time because I'm not a lead role, which is kind of nice since it's been a while that, since I've been in a show. Um, but when you're doing a lead role, you have all your lines to memorize and then you have the blocking, which is where you're standing. And uh, luckily this time, it's a little bit low key for me, you know, just as ensemble, so I don't have to so worry. And so. you sing with a group of people? Right. Oh, that's cool. 
Yeah. That's cool. But that sounds exciting, though. Yeah, I'm very excited to do that. What is your, do you have future ambition in acting or music? Um, not really. I just, I like doing local community theater. Um, because this is a small well, you pond. Know we that need way. Native <laughs> actors, right? Actresses. Yeah. yeah. Um, I lived in LA for a little while and um, was asked about doing some of the acting, but it's just, it's a lot of work. That kind of, on the larger scale, acting mm -hmm. in movies, et cetera, is, they, they put in a lot of work for those movies. And I don't okay. know if I have that much energy <laughs> for that. <laughs> but yeah, local stuff is fun for me. Yeah. Well, you have small children too, right? I do, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when they get a little bit older, maybe then you could coach them and you all can act. Yeah. I know my <laughs> daughter would be up on that stage if I let her right Oh, quick. she's following in your footsteps. She is. She likes, <laughs> she likes to be the center of attention. <laughs> oh, okay. In a, in a good way. Uh huh. <laughs> She likes that theater. She well, does, you know, yeah. it, it's it's true though. When you watch these movies and you see the actors, you know, we're really not represented there, or you it's know, true. to have somebody playing a native role. Mm -hmm. So That's it true. is important to get people in that field. I've been happy, really, uh, watching like Longmire's been getting a lot of native actors in that, and and that's been really cool to see and. And I feel like we're starting to get represented more in films as representing mm -hmm. ourselves, but um, we still have ways to go in that aspect. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of areas. There's always commercials and mm -hmm. <laughs> other yeah. things you could get into as well. But you also teach. Yeah. So I, I work at an elementary school as, as a paraeducator in the mm -hmm. resource department. So um, during the week, I work primarily either one-on-one -on -one with students who have IEPs or who need extra assistance uh, catching up. We call them um, RTI kiddos, and they're, they're kids who just need a little extra one-on-one -on -one support with their reading or with their math um, to make sure that they're at grade level. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so much fun, it's so much fun. I get little groups of either one-on-one -on -one or in like groups of three or four, just first, second, and third graders. And they are a kick. They say the funniest things, and I always like sharing on my Facebook little moments that uh -huh. they'll they'll say. It's just things they it's say. So funny. <laughs> They're just so funny. You know, kids say the darndest things. They really do. They do, don't so, they? Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you about something. You know, um, you said you went to the Giants game recently, right? Yeah. And about two years, I, I went. I didn't go this year, but I went a few years back, mm -hmm. and at about two years ago, there was somebody that showed up at the Giants game, that particular game, with a headdress on. Oh, because dear. they heard it was Native American night, right? Oh, dear. Now, you experienced, experienced this at the Stanford Powwow, didn't you? I did. Tell me about it. Yeah. So, I was on my way to get something to eat, and I saw this woman wearing a headdress, and I told myself, say anything, just walk, just ignore it, because she was being interviewed by two uh, people oh. with a camera, and I was, I was irked, but I just said, okay, I'm standing in line, and I said, if she's still there talking to these people when I'm done getting my food, then I'll say something. And I was walking back, and sure enough, she was still there, and um, they were talking, and so I walked over, and I went to the camera people, because I didn't want to talk to her, because mm -hmm. usually I could tell she was looking for a confrontation by being there in that. So I spoke with the interviewers and I said, what is it that you're filming? And the woman said, well, see how she won't even talk to me? She comes right, right to you. Uh, it's because she doesn't understand what I'm doing. And so I asked the woman, I said, well, what is it that you're doing? And she says, I'm 100% Cherokee, and so I have a right to wear this headdress. And <laughs> I said, well, first of all, women don't wear headdresses traditionally unless they're given special permission by elders within the tribe or if they're, uh, or if they have earned it themselves in a specific way that has been approved by their tribe. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the, that headdress is not a Cherokee tradition. That's Plains, that's a Plains tribe thing that we do. It's not, this woman was obviously not educated on her the traditions of her own culture if she truly was Cherokee. And so I asked this woman, would you like me to educate you on why what you're doing is not okay? And she didn't want to hear it. So at that point, I excused myself from the situation because 
I knew she brought out her phone. She was recording me because she wanted to get attention. Mm. And so I walked away, but at, and then I had a couple other women who joined me later and came back to talk with the, the interviewers, and they were backing me up. These aunt, two aunties are right there, you know, like saying, this is not okay. What she's doing is not okay. And, and um, they were just helping me to explain to the interviewers, you can't show this woman because she's going to make other people think that, that that's okay to do, and it's not and she's doing it for attention, and if you interview her and use that material, you're giving her attention. So, um, I mean, uh, you just, you do was what you can. Was it a television station, or uh, was? It was for a documentary. Oh, my. So, I mean, you do what you can in those situations. Mm -hmm. you, you educate, you say your piece, and then if they still won't listen, you just have to walk away, and that's what I've kind of learned, is that mm -hmm. people are gonna do what they want regardless of what you say then you can only I can only hope that what I say to this person you know strikes a chord and that she wants to uh, be respectful because I know if I had done something disrespectful to a culture or a community and then that was brought to my attention I would feel remorse and right. immediately want to fix well, sure apologize and right yeah to fix what I had done and to to apologize and this woman didn't do that so I I said all right well that's all you have that's all you can do really <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, I think it was pretty obvious she was doing it for attention, and she yeah. knew she was being offensive. Right. You know, she and the was. security eventually came over and asked her to leave, which if she they said, if you won't remove the headdress, then we're going to need to ask you to leave, and she did leave. So. And did you also encounter something like that at the Women's March? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell another, us about that story. <laughs> yeah, it was another woman who was, um, she was of uh, a Mexican tribal descent, and mm -hmm. I encouraged her to use, to, to research her uh, tribe in Mexico and to embrace the cultures of her tribe. Mm -hmm. And I said, you're wearing a, um, a Plains Indian's headdress, which is a, actually a costume because the fur that she had on the sides here was fake. I mean, it was obviously a costume. And um, I encouraged her to, to learn about her culture and her tribal practices and to embrace that and honor that because that's really honoring her heritage if she does that. She chose to keep the headdress on. And again, it's all you can really do is, is educate and say something and hope that they make a good choice. But Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. I mean, it takes a lot of courage because... Um, Seems like we everywhere we go, we face that. I mean, still with the football teams, or a lot of the teams. Let's just put it that way. Well, and there's that's one thing I said to uh, the interviewers at Stanford when I after I had confronted the woman, as I said, you know, she may think that what she was doing was fine because no one said anything. Mm -hmm. But after I said something, here came the two aunties right backing me up and talking to her, and then people in the powwow circle started at that point shouting things and telling her she needed to take it off. And what I'm noticing is as time is, uh, is, is going on in um, our society, we're standing up for ourselves mm -hmm. a lot more in terms of saying like, that upsets me and that needs to stop. And I think people are taken aback by it. Like, why are people saying something all of a sudden? But the more people who say something, we encourage each other to support each other and to stand exactly. up together. So I think that's why it's happening more, and I think that's a good thing. It is good. Yeah. Uh, I was at the um, the demonstration at the uh, Niner Stadium when they played um, the Redskins. Yeah. And we demonstrated there, but there were so many people who came by, and they didn't look it, but who knows? They said, "I'm Native, and I have no problem with it," you know. And it's like, mm, okay, <laughs> you know, but we. <sighs> So many people arguing, you know, the issue, and that was a tough one. But you know, we stood our ground. There was a lot of people there, a lot of support. Right. Um, and we have to continue doing it. Right. You know, so we can educate people. Yeah. Yeah. And I try to use the powwows.com platform for that sometimes too. You know, some of my articles are powwows related, and then some of my articles are, you know, current event based things that are happening, like talking about the march. Um, you know, just because that's a large platform and reaches a lot of people, I'm mm -hmm. trying to, to get the word out on specific issues that I know are a problem. Like, there's an article I'm working on. Um, there's some of our native clothing companies mm -hmm. who are designers of their own material are having their artwork stolen by companies 
in, uh, in Asia. And there, these people are profiting off of designs that are originally native artists. You know, and that's not a not okay. That going on now. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, uh, things like that. I can use my 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 writing platform with Powells.com to bring attention to these uh, important issues. Powells.com has really grown, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, because I've been watching it for many years, and at one time it was just a, a schedule of Powells, but right. it really has uh, been augmented by the the photos and the um, the articles and everything. Yeah, Paul Gowder works really hard. On Where's he from? Company. He's in, from North Carolina. Okay. Yeah, and he works really hard. And he has a day job, so that's other than his powwows.com career. I think we all do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he, he does, you know, both of these things, and, and powwows.com takes a lot of effort and work on his part. So um, it's been just a pleasure getting to know him as well working there and being able to work with him at Gathering of Nations was fun. Oh, yeah. Co-hosting that live feed was a lot of fun. I hope and I think we get to do it again hopefully next year. So Oh that's great. Is that the first time you had gone to the gathering? It is. It's oh, the first time okay. that I've been there. Um, it was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty exciting. I had I went a few years. Um, I had family in Albuquerque so that was convenient. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So guess what? I'm going to be visiting you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what other are, um, current events have you worked on? Probably the water, um, Standing Rock. Right. Yeah. So I I did some on Standing Rock, um, but a lot of what was being covered at Standing Rock was through powwows was just resharing information because there was a lot of media people that were there already. So uh, it was a lot of gathering of what information was out there, making sure it was accurate, and then resubmitting it and sharing it for people to see. So I didn't work on any articles, uh, per se, that were new about that topic. But yeah, it was, that was a, that was a stressful time. <laughs> and it still is because it's still going on. Right. You know, and yeah. it's not getting any better, and it won't under the, <laughs> with our, pre yeah. uh, whatever he's called. <laughs> The current administration. <laughs> the current dictator. <laughs> 45. Yeah, Mr. 45. Mr. 45. <laughs> I don't think we want to call him Mr. <laughs> so what are our future plans for Kareen? Um, Just to continue photographing at powwows. I think that's a lot of fun. Um, and maybe eventually uh, would like to uh, head out to the Minnesota area. It's my niece and nephew are Mille Lacs Band Ojibwe. And so I'd like to go out there and, and kind of familiarize myself with um, with that part of the United States and and with the go back to the Dakotas and and be around there and photograph there because it's so different, you know, than from growing up in the powwows that are out in California. And, mm -hmm. But you know, Where's traveling is from? traveling is is hard. Where's your Lakota family from? From Pine Ridge. The from Pine Ridge family, yeah. So it's I mean it's hard to get out there. I mean unless you drive because planes are so expensive. So. Yes, but and there's not many planes going out there. We were out no. there in February. <laughs> no, <laughs> and it's gotta go into Bismarck and then drive uh -huh. everywhere. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> we we uh, spent about a week out there. I and saw your photos yeah, of that. Yeah, that. my husband's family's from out there. That's fun. Cheyenne River Sioux. Yeah, that's yeah. fun. So, But we did go to Pine Ridge with a visited a friend and okay. made the rounds. You know, yeah. but there really is, it's hard to get out there. Yeah, There's it is. There's no quick way, so. No. <laughs> <laughs> and even my, even my Southwest doesn't fly out there, so I that know. made it pretty hard. It's true. Yeah, but um, I really enjoyed it. It was windy, very windy, and, um, but it was, it was interesting because we went all the way out to uh, Standing Rock. Okay. Um, and it was right after they had closed it. Mm. So we did get to at least go out and see where everything was and, you know. Yeah. We tried to make it out in time. Um, one of our producers was out there, Steve Macias. He, they, we had a fundraiser and raised a lot of money and sent it out there. So they went out. Took That's that great. Out, so. Yeah, we tr cool. try and stay involved as much as we can as you do. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> now, all these different articles you've written so far, how do you decide what you're going to cover? 
you know, do people make suggestions or how do you? Yeah, sometimes there are series that I come up with on my own. I had one that was uh, Native American Students Achieving Greatness, uh, where students who are in high school or in university, um, if they were doing things for their uh, communities, I would write about what they were achieving. Someone like Joy Montoya, yeah. He just recently graduated from San Jose right. State. So I wrote about him and his, what he was doing at the time about three years ago. Um, so if somebody had like a student that they wanted covered, if they were doing oh, okay. great things within their community, or if they said if this is what's happening in our local tribe and this is, a, this is something that needs attention, mm -hmm. um, then they could email me. Um, and my email is corinne.ostrike at gmail.com and then I would be able to communicate with them further about what's going on, maybe even to get out there and to cover what's happening if it's feasible. And then take some photographs of them and, and what's happening and use all of that for the article. And so yeah, I mean we're always, I'm always looking for um, something new articles. Unique, something something yeah, different. Something different, something new, um, something that that is uh, happening within our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. So that's powwows.com in case they don't know how to find it or haven't been on there before, but powwows.com. And they also find out what local powwows are happening. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you so much for having it's me. It's nice to have you. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Native Voice TV.